Now, many of us have heard about the paleo diet. For breakfast, I would have, say, 10 to 15 bananas. Going sugar-free might be so hot right now. Australians having about 50 kilos of sugar each year. It produces results. I kind of thought if I did enough research, the answer must be out there. There's got to be a perfect diet. And there are so many people out there who believe they've found the perfect diet, but a lot of it's so contradictory. The only thing that you know I could kind of come up with was just to be safe, I'll just cut it out anyway. These fad diets and ways of living, not just eating, are cultish. And there is an exclusivity about them. I think nutrition becomes a monster for some people. Hello. There you go. There you go. Melanie Colwell is a Pilates instructor. She was always conscious of leading a healthy life, but in 2013, she developed an obsession with eating clean food that was free of toxins. It was a gradual process. As each month went by, I think I got more and more restrictive around food. The gluten was probably the first, and then the dairy, and then the refined sugar. Then it was the meat. The only grains I was really eating were brown rice or quinoa. I ate lots of vegetables, eggs, nuts, small amounts of fruit, and tended to be the low sugar fruits like apples and berries. Yeah, I think that's about it. Public health is concerned with the whole system. Rebecca Reynolds is a nutritionist and lecturer at the University of New South Wales. She says an increase in obsession with healthy eating and food origin is creating a new form of eating disorder. So orthorexia nervosa is a term coined by an American medical doctor, Stephen Bratman, in 1997. Ortho means correct or righteous. So orthorexia nervosa is like bulimia nervosa or anorexia nervosa in that it's a, an eating disorder with a focus on eating righteously or more simply a health food eating disorder. But I guess it could be a slow journey where you maybe see a fad diet and decide it sounds good, it's black and white, it's easy to follow, so you cut out certain food groups and as a result you actually improve your eating pattern and then you decide it is definitely that way of eating, it's that fad diet, it's the answer to everything. I see a lot of parallels in the definition of orthorexia nervosa and current dietary fads like paleo, clean eating, raw, no sugar diet, which I call fad diets. When people think about paleo, often they think, oh, we've got to be eating lots of meat and not many vegetables. You couldn't be further from the truth. You don't need to cut out all carbs, all dairy, only eat vegetables when they're raw. What a crop. If we were all paleo, we'd all be dead at 40 or 30. The thing that I became quite obsessed with um, in regards to my eating was the quality. So there's a real clean eating movement at the moment and I guess that's what you could classify um, my sort of eating approach as. So it was kind of trying to have um, food that was as organic, as pure as possible. I didn't want to be ingesting sort of, you know, something that was, you know, really greasy or dirty or toxic. Like I had one experience where I had a friend's birthday at a pub and I knew that I was going to have to eat um, this sort of unhealthy food. I had accepted that, but it still stressed me out. And it was only a couple of weeks later when I was talking to a friend that she said, you do realise that's not normal. You should be able to enjoy a pub meal with friends, uh, no matter how healthy you are, it shouldn't stress you out. So it was literally the first time it had dawned on me that, oh, maybe what I'm doing isn't actually the right way and the perfect way. The negative side effects of orthorexia nervosa can include physically being malnourished. So if you cut out entire food groups like dairy, carbohydrates, etc., you can miss out on important nutrients. Psychological side effects can include just, you know, preoccupation, obsession, stress, anxiety with how you eat. It can really have negative consequences on someone's life, just like anorexia and bulimia. Definitely social media had a negative impact for me. Um, I started following, you know, wellness bloggers and things like that. Yeah, the Fitspiration type ones that, that post, you know, pictures of sort of, you know, really ripped abs and go hard or go home sort of mentality. But yeah, it definitely exacerbates the fear. Should we eat vegetables raw or cooked? find out which provides the most nutrients. This is something that I certainly would have 
focused on and I would have loved to have read. You know, now I look at it and think it's just so sad. The non-health educated spruikers of certain ways of eating often give non-evidence-based advice, which can be dangerous, yes. So we'll see how many I can have, maybe 40, 50 today. All right, I'm done. 51 bananas today. This is finished. I'm not gonna lie, I'm really full. Oh, really, really full, my belly. If you ate that every day, over a year, you'd probably die because you would be malnourished. You would not get enough protein. Food's become a religion because it's a crutch for things that we don't understand and we can't control. We can't control ageing and death, for example. And is that what nutrition's become, a religion, to stroke people's fears about life? It was just when I kept getting cold after cold after cold, I thought, okay, something's not right. So I went and saw a naturopath and she just basically said, you're not getting enough protein. Um, and if you can bring yourself to eat some meat, I really think it would be beneficial for your health. I was sort of relieved when she said that. I started to kind of relax what I was eating. Orthorexia nervosa is not currently a recognised clinical eating disorder. One clinician I spoke to said that she thought it should be an eating disorder in its own right, primarily because healthy eating is so glorified at the moment in society. I, I don't think it's glorious. I think it can be really quite poisonous actually.